got a chance at the door. I just did. Oh, you're a little slow. Hey, come grab some aluminum. I need to start part two. Okay, first question about this aluminum for the airplane. Which face should I drill holes on? The landing gear is going to protrude out of this hole here. So should I drill holes, lightning holes here, 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 blah, blah, blah. Or should I do it on this face of the aluminum? Which side should I drill holes on? The side one. The side one? That's what I thought. Yeah. Kind of like a bridge, right? Now oh, that thing's done. Um, I guess it's back to the fuselage. I know in a lot of comments you guys have told me that uh, the only thing really missing here is any vertical members as far as stopping any airframe twist, which is actually a big concern. Uh, I didn't really address that in the other video, mainly because um, I'm still going inside this. I actually can crawl inside this thing because I'm planning on uh, putting polyurethane to cover the wood. But then I got me thinking, I'm like, that might not be necessary for this because I'm only going to really fly for maybe like a summer or two. And it's probably just going to go hang in a uh, hangar somewhere and stay there till the end of time, I guess. You alive, it's not I'm hoping. Twist. At least not under normal conditions and normal loads. I mean, that's how they, that's how it's built on other airplanes that are a lot heavier than mine. What were you at before? Three pounds? Three pounds was it before anything happened to it. Oh god, I... Oh no. 36 pounds! Oh no. Oh wait, no, that's that's 3.6. 3.6 ounces? Uh, 3.6 pounds, so I added 0.6 pounds to it. Oh god, it's only one side too. It's gonna be so heavy. Now it's time to start freaking out, because I gotta think about my CG. Oh well. All the fiberglass parts are finished. It's pretty big and in the basement. There's William Osmond. Look at him. I don't know what he's doing here, but he's uh he's in my house. Stealing Peter's things. Okay. Um. So a lot of you guys can ask, how am I getting this out of the house? So. I don't know. Okay. So here we have the completed tail services. This is a nice fiberglass. I'm like, this thing is seriously like really really hard. I'm like, I'm kind of impressed how hard it is, and it also came out really light. This piece right here weighs one pound. Uh. 8 ounces, I believe. And this part weighs 2 pounds, 1 ounce. So people might be on this up and saying you're going to die. Because uh, duct tape does not make very good hinges. Oh no, this is completely, totally fine. It's a totally awesome way to do this. Duct tape is totally fine. You ever heard of 100 mile an hour duct tape? 
Yeah. Probably not. I don't think anyone's ever heard of that. But uh, I just want to mock it up, set it all together. One thing we need to do is check the center of gravity, which is the balance point. Uh, that is highly critical to how successful this airplane will be. Oh, also, I mentioned something about weight, but um, a lot of people were asking about it in the last video. And my projected weight for this airplane right now is about 180 pounds. But the more I looked around, I found another airplane called the Lightning Bug. It was actually a plane that uses two DA-150 model airplane engines. And that's the same motors I'm using, but mine are electrics versus gas, which, which is what they have. And that plane flies pretty good. But the problem is that plane weighs like 130 something pounds. So if I go to 200 pounds and I'm trying to fly on the same amount of power, this is gonna fly like crap. So I have to keep the weight down and I'm freaking out a little bit right now because the tail cluster group is gonna weigh about 10 pounds in my tail. The fuselage right now with all the aluminum and spars in it weighs about 69 pounds or so. And uh, that's still pretty light, but I haven't factored in the weight of the wings and the rest of the equipment and fiberglass. So I gotta be very careful with how much weight I add to this airplane. Uh, we'll do this part first. All right. All right, so this is like the spar we used to. This is the Poplar spar. So we will CG check it right now. So I'm gonna put this in there. YouTuber builds homemade ultralight. Okay, now let me get let me get some stuff under there so I can do a balance on that, and I'm gonna get in it. Because ideally the CG placement should be on that spar. Oh, it actually might be. It might be all right. I might be in acceptable range. I'm gonna just lean back a little bit. All right, uh, put some down pressure on it. How much downforce are you about using? Try the fire extinguisher. Uh, try to get level. So, wait, so when you're, you can't even like shift your weight at all. Oh, well, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's an acceptable load, a uh, load range. It's like, it's like, it's like a four inch deviation. And I, it'll be fine. I mean, really, if I lean forward, the plane will start descending. If I lean back, the plane will probably go up just a little bit. But I'll be totally fine. That's pretty good. That's actually really good. Okay, I'm, I'm happy with the tail. I now need to figure out how much this thing actually weighs with all this crap on it. You know, I checked it earlier and it seemed to be around 65 pounds. So let's weigh this and figure out what it is. It does look a little uh, jacked up. Realistically, I'm gonna sit about right here. I think this will be pretty good. Oh wait, I have roll purple in here. I don't need this crap. <laughs> All right, let's see where that fire extinguisher balances now. Well, you keep moving. So you sit where you're gonna sit. All right, this is where I'm gonna sit. It's not actually super critical though. This process. Is it like balanced? It's like barely over the... Lean back a little bit, see if you can okay. balance it yourself. I think you can probably balance it yourself. Okay. You, you gotta go forward a little bit. Forward a little bit more. There you go. You're like right there. All right, let me know when you're off. You, you're, you're floating right now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's balancing, that's pretty good. So, yeah, I'm just stopping it from going. Okay. All right, I guess we're gonna wrap this up. And just, uh, let me read some comments. Actually, Willem, you read the comments for me. Okay. I'll answer them. If this project is successful, and fly is stable, would you consider strapping some pontoons to it and seeing if it can take off from a lake? Probably no, mainly because, actually, I would probably actually rebuild this airplane as a seaplane, because right now the hull can be made to step so I could actually use water operations. But seaplanes are kind of heavy and they need more power. I don't think I'll have that kind of power. Next question. Wait, so you're actually planning to fly in this thing. You're depending your life on foam, Gorilla Glue, and Gorilla Glue. Good luck. That wasn't really a question. Well, thank you. Next question. Who else is focusing on the little puppy instead of Peter? <laughs> Am I picking bad questions? Maybe you are. Oh, here we go. Build a spaceship. I was focusing on the puppy. Maybe we'll I <laughs> Okay, I got a great one. Okay, Why aren't you on flight test anymore? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> okay, to reiterate, the reason I'm not on flight test anymore is because I had to come home and work for my family and help them with our stuff. Plus, I really want to do more projects besides RC airplanes, so, like, this thing, I am 99.9% .9 sure they would never ever le legally let me do this, mainly for insurance purposes at flight tests, so I have to go out and do things on my own, plus I get to do whatever I want, kind of, so that's pretty cool.
Next question. Okay, I got a good one. You should make a dummy that weighs the same as you and fly the plane on radio. Uh, no. Next question. Actually, the reason why I'm not doing that is because I have to buy servos and junk, and it has to be RC, and if, at that stage, I really just want to just go flying. I was it, it's not fun. legal either. Yeah, it's too, it's too heavy. I need, you I need have to have waiver. permission. Yeah, I need a waiver of permission yeah. and all that, so no. Sorry. Since you're planning on fiberglassing the fuselage, you should consider rounding your edges. Oh, I replied to that comment already, and yes, I will, I will round the edges. Nice question. <laughs> Some of these are kind of funny. You read the funny ones. Uh, they're not really questions, though. If it flies, please stay low. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no guarantees. Well, I'm going to actually fly kind of high when I do the... Um, I'm going to do slow... Oh, I'll reiterate on the spin stall testing. I'm not really going to do spin testing. I'm mostly just going to get it really high and like see how it behaves when I get like cross-controlled and see like the first stages of the spin, like how bad is the airplane going to fly. That way I can kind of know when I'm flying low, when it's acceptable, and when it's not acceptable. Because I've seen a number of engine out flights or people just pull back on the yoke and the stall horn's going and everything's going and they just get it set to snap over and just fall over when they should just go forward and let it crash. So that's a terrible thing to do. So I want to know how it flies at the slowest minimum speed and how mushy it gets and what the cusp of the stall looks like for this airplane. Flying low is when most of the crashes happen. Well, most of the crashes happen when you hit the ground too, so there's that. Next question. Aquí es do Brazil and admiro se canal se canal e foda. Huh? Spanish? Next question. What's the breed of puppy? <laughs> uh, I think he, the little pupper dog, I think he's got boxer in him and some other kind of dog. I have no idea what he is though. Next question. Flying fidget spinner, please. I think Flight just did something like that. I don't know what happened to it, and I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole. Before we're done. Uh, here we go. Don't die. Do not. Uh, okay. Thanks. Duly noted. And, uh, yeah. Next question. Um. Do you have a projected weight, and does that include an estimate for glass and resin? Also, if you haven't chosen resin, uh, West Systems is rock uh, all reliable. That is a very good question. I think I might have answered that, I'm not sure, but the all weight for this airplane, I think we mentioned it earlier, but I'll mention it again, because a lot of people just kind of skip through the videos and whatnot, but the projected weight is about 180 pounds, and uh, yes, I'm using West Systems to glass it. The tails are even glass with West Systems. It's two ounce cloth. Another thing about the tail, this, the most heavy piece in that thing is the elevator, and that thing weighs about three and a half pounds, and it is well overbuilt, the elevator service itself, because I kind of copied the uh, Fisher 606, which is a Cessna 151 to be made out of wood, and that's a lot faster, a lot heavier, and that thing's built the exact same way, because this plane's not going to fly that fast, so that should be ten times more than is ever needed for this airplane. Uh, I... I don't know if it matters or not, but it's actually four ounce cloth. It's two ounce cloth. Four ounce. You said it was two ounce. Yeah, I got it wrong. It's no, actually it's, four it's ounce. It's not cloth. four ounce. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Really? That's what, what Greg told what does me. That mean? Oh crap! So that's even heavier cloth. Two ounce would be so fine that it wouldn't do anything. Oh. Well, it's four ounce cloth. Good. Thanks, okay. Sam. But hey, it's it's lightweight, so I'm not complaining. It's really, really, really torsionally strong. Yes. Does the fuselage have any diagonal struts to resist torsion? Oh yeah, come here. Look in here. I added these. I know you guys kind of mentioned something about that, and the reason why I didn't put these in right away is because I was still crawling around back there to do stuff. So now those are in. Because now this thing is handling like, like a lot of twist very well. It still can twist up here, but braces will be put in here, but they'll be unboltable so I can take them out when I want to crawl in there to do maintenance and all that. So there's always that. Please fly in it. <laughs> uh, thanks. That is totally the plan. If I'm not mistaken, the FAA must certify it air airworthy for a human to go in it. Wrong. Uh, part 103, look it up. <laughs> That's just about it for that. Oh, he's so damn cute. Are they talking about you or the dog? I'm pretty sure they're talking about the dog, not me. One more question. Pick a good one. Then Make it your last. Then a small DC generator instead of heavy batteries, or a generator and one backup battery. That seems like a lot of points for engineering failure, so I'm not that smart, so like I won't. a gasoline engine? Well, I mean, I have to engineer the batteries, and I have to design all that system to work with each other, so I don't think I'm going to do that. Is it actually easier to put a gas engine? Well, it's easier to put gas engines on this, yes. But to but generate electricity? I have to find a generator for that stuff and to convert it into power to use by the motors. Um, I, I'm not, I don't know that much about it, so I'm not going to go into uncharted territory. Plus, it's really heavy. One question. You get one, one, you get one final question, and then I'm going to wrap this up, and we're done uh, for this video. What are you planning on using for batteries? Uh, 
three or four 30,000 milliamp six cell light posts. So they're going to be wired in series and then parallel. So it'll be a it'll be 12 s it'll be a 12 s 60,000 milliamp battery. Yeah. Okay, so I guess that concludes part two. Uh, let me know if you guys have any more questions or whatever. Huge thanks to people on Patreon for like really helping me out with this thing, and also the GoFundMe, which is insane. It's like at like it's almost like a thousand um a thousand donations. And I read some of the questions regarding the parachute and all that, and I think you guys might be right. So I might go with the BRS system, but that's for what you don't what you guys don't know what that is. That's a ballistic recovery system. Basically, there's a rocket that pulls the uh, the drogue chute out. It, it's, it actually replaces the drogue or pilot chute and pulls the entire parachute system out, so it gets air a lot quicker in a lower altitude. So I'm more likely to actually live in that case, plus I don't have to jump out of the airplane. But the problem is the BRS is $4,000. I don't know if you guys like, know if there's one for sale that's cheaper than that, or I don't know, but $4,000 is a lot of money compared to the 2600 I originally needed. So that's kind of an option, but I don't think I'll be able to afford that option. So, bye! Subscribe, do all this stuff, and uh, unsubscribe and thumbs down. And subscribe to William Osmond instead. No. Oh, well, we also be doing more content with this fool, so look for some cool stuff real, real soon. And also subscribe to his channel because, you know, you're supposed to do that. And bye.